Morning folks and welcome back. I'm finally back out on the river today. I'm on the river Gipping in Suffolk. It's not very far from where I live and it's a river that I hadn't actually heard of until earlier this week. <laughs> I was thinking uh, I'd like to get out for a paddle now that uh, lockdown restrictions are starting to be eased a bit and um, looking for a place where I hadn't been before and this river popped up. It flows between uh, Stowe Market, a small town in Suffolk, and the port of Ipswich. Um, yeah, small river. I've heard mixed reviews about what it's like to paddle. Uh, can be quite choked up, although I should be alright this time of year because we're, we're early on. It's early spring and um, Yeah, it's early spring, and um, all that uh, all that growth hasn't hasn't grown up yet. So uh, should be all should be all right. There's also plenty of water in the river because we've had a very wet winter, and um, we had a bit of rain this past week. So um, water levels shouldn't be an issue. I'm just uh, coming through the back of Needham Market Village here and uh, the river's got very shallow and quite fast moving. It's a little bit of a battle actually. I'm kind of having to more punt and paddle. Lovely along here though, what a place to live.
Well, I've come to my first obstacle. Um, I came to a weir across the river, quite a, quite a big one, um, and there was a channel just, just before it. So I took that channel up thinking there might be a way to get around, a way to get out and get around the, the weir. There hasn't really been one. It's all private, private land, fenced off. Clearly don't want uh, canoeists up on their land. And now I've just come across this second weir here. So I'm gonna try and get my, get my boat up beside it. Um, there's a, a bit of undergrowth. Looks like I might be able to drag the boat through. See if we can get back in the water at the top. So as you can probably tell, I'm paddling upstream. Um, I put in at Needham Market or Needham, Needham Lakes. There's some old gravel lakes there, gravel pits. And um, there's, a, there's a place we can park. So I put in there and I'm gonna paddle upstream towards Stowe Market, see how far I can get. It's about five miles, not too far. But um, you know, I don't know what condition the river is in. It's shallow in places, as you saw back there, coming around the back of the village of Needham Market. Um, you know, when the river is shallow, there's still the same volume of water passing through that channel, so the water is moving much more quickly, which makes it a bit more of a challenge to propel yourself upstream. <laughs> so I just use my paddle as a pole, basically, and just propel myself off the riverbed. And that sort of worked all right. Yeah, it's nice here though, it's a bit deeper. Got a bit of a breeze, bit of a headwind today, this way, so um, that will bode well for my paddle back. I'll have the current and the wind blowing in my favour, which will be good. Um, the River Gipping used to be a navigation. Um, it's always been a river, um, and it's always been used uh, by flat bottom boats to um, transport goods between Stowe Market and Ipswich. But um, in the 1790s, they decided to turn it into a canal turn it into a navigation. It's not actually a canal because it's still a river, but it's the same principle. They put in a load of locks. There's a 90 foot height difference between Stowe Market and the port at Ipswich. So to get over that height difference, oh, train. <laughs> yeah, to get over that height difference, they put in 15 locks. And that uh, weir that we just passed back there is one of the old lock sites. The doors were taken, taken out when the uh, canal navigation was abandoned in the 1930s and they replaced the locks with weirs to control the water flow. It's lovely to be back out in the water and I couldn't have picked a better day apart from that wind maybe look at the sky gorgeous apologies for me being in silhouette can't do a lot about that got the sun behind me it'll be better on the paddle back <laughs> yeah no it's good to be out I don't know about everybody else but I think this second lockdown has been 
a lot harder than the first. I guess because it's been over winter, that first lockdown it was sort of spring summer wasn't it we could enjoy outdoor spaces a bit more i don't know yeah but good to have some dates on the horizon for when things are going to be lifted all going well i know that a lot of you in europe are suffering with a third wave and i dare say that'll hit us it's bound to but for now, it's looking like things will start to open up again fairly soon, which is good.
Well, I've come to another strainer across the river, another tree down, and it's not easily passable. Um, the banks are, are very steep and they're nettily, and it's hard to drag the boat up and then and then back down and, and get back in again. And it's rocky, and I'm scratching my boat, and yeah, I think I'm gonna turn around here. I have got to Stowe Market. This is the edge of Stowe Market, and to be honest, the river from here just winds through a kind of industrial area. There's a, a big maltings, Munton's maltings, and then there's the old ICI paintworks. So it's just, there's nothing that pretty. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, big man-made structures and the river is getting shallower and shallower. So I think it's a good point to turn around anyway. And uh, at least I'll have the current with me and um, the wind on my back. I've bought some stuff to cook up for lunch. So I'm gonna find a nice spot to stop on the way back and um, have a little barbecue. The old towpath beside the river is maintained by the Gipping River Trust and they have plans to restore the, the navigation between Ipswich and Stowmarket, Market which is really exciting. Um, that'll open it up to, to boat users. I'm um, not quite sure what, what they have planned. Maybe putting the gates back into the locks and making them usable, I don't know. Or well, certainly access maybe around them, around the weirs, which would be brilliant. You know, as, you, as you've seen, uh, access isn't great. Um, it's a bit of a tricky bit of water to, to navigate because there's trees down and, and yeah, those weirs are a bit of an issue because there's no access. But that's the way it is with all of these little rivers. Unfortunately, they're just, they're just not maintained like they used to be. We've got a load of cloud that has come in. My beautiful wall-to-wall -wall blue sky has gone. Well, I think I might have spotted a nice little place to stop and have a bite to eat. There's a little wood on the opposite side of the bank to where the footpath is. And I should be able to tuck myself away in there quite nicely. I'm gonna be having burgers for my lunch. So I've brought along my honey stove and the hive extension kit, which basically adds two sides, uh, makes it into a bigger stove, ideal if you wanna barbecue. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I brought along some charcoal, I'm cheating today. <laughs> Even though I'm in woodland, I didn't know what they would be when I, when I got here, so I brought charcoal with me. And um, I've got some uh, paraffin to, to get the charcoal going. Hi, 
I know, charcoal, paraffin and a lighter. <laughs> Not very bushcraft, don't hate me. <laughs> I'm gonna make the most of these flames while those coals die down and just boil some water for some coffee. Right, we're gonna get these burgers on. These coals have pretty much all gone white. So we're good to go. Good old sizzle as soon as they go on, that's always good. Just while those are finishing off, I've got a couple of rashes of Cornish bacon that Ginge kindly sent up for me. Which just looks gorgeous. <laughs> oh yes. Right, let's get these burgers made up. Ketchup, gotta be. Some gherkin. Tomato. As I'm surrounded by it here, some wild garlic. Mm. Burger, slice of cheese. I know I'm gonna get loads of comments about processed cheese, I'm sure, but processed cheese is just one of my vices. And a couple of bits of bacon. Just to top it all off, I've got a little bit of zesty, sweet and zesty jalapeno hot sauce from Michael over at Poco's Chili Farm. Just a few dribbles of that. Let's give this a whirl. Mm. 
Yep, that's a burger. Lunch hit the spot perfectly. I feel refueled, ready to hit the water again. Um, before I get back in the canoe, I just thought I'd show you on the map uh, where I started from and where we got to, um, just so you've got a bit of an idea. I parked and put in just here at Needham Lakes. There's a, a kind of picnic area and kids play area and some walks and things you can park and um, paddled up upstream upstream here this is that lock the first one where uh, i ended up paddling up that small side channel and still had to drag the boat through the undergrowth <laughs> um yeah continued up this way and uh that's where the second weir was that second lock where i carried the boat around and then this is the railway line we saw the trains going over and we got just to about here where there's a bridge and that's where that tree was across the river. So I didn't really miss much. This is all just a big industrial area, as you can see. Um, not particularly pretty or anything. So I'm, you know, I'm quite happy that I missed that little bit out. nearly back at the car at Needham Lakes. Um, the lakes are old aggregate pits. Sand and gravel were extracted there. They think possibly back as long ago as sort of Roman period. And uh, the pits are now flooded and formed lakes. There's some walks and stuff that you can do around there. Nice little spot. But I've had a lovely paddle today. I'd quite recommend this actually as a paddle. It's a bit challenging in places because you've got to keep getting out. For me, that's part of the fun of it, really. <laughs> Breaks it up a bit, you know. There's some nice little spots, some nice 
sections that are away from the road, you kind of have the train track at your side pretty much the whole way, but the trains aren't constant. They do make a racket when they go past. One going past now, I think. But yeah, good little paddle. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.